good morning and welcome back to another episode of Matins in the Morning. It is Tuesday, May 7th. That's Tuesday of the sixth week of Easter. My name is Nathan. I'm joined by Joseph and we're coming to you as always from the St. Thomas More House of Prayer where it is our mission to pray and promote the Liturgy of the Hours. You can find out more about us over at our website at liturgyofthehours.org. We're in Volume 2 of the Liturgy of the Hours 4 Volume Prayer Book. If you're using a prayer book, I'm going to take us through our page numbers that we'll need. You can also find this information in the description just below the video. So our opening hymn today, we'll use the Easter hymn, Be at the Lamb's High Feast, and that begins on page 540. We'll be singing the first verse and the fourth verse. The antiphons and psalms will come from the current day of the Psalter. We're in week two of the Psalter, and those begin on page 1257. And lastly, our readings, responsories, and concluding prayer are in the proper seasons, beginning on page 888. As always, we'll begin with our prayer that we pray in preparation for the divine office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. amen. Amen. Open, O Lord, my mouth to bless your holy name. Cleanse my heart from all vain, evil, and wandering thoughts. Enlighten my understanding and kindle my affections, that I may worthily, attentively, and devoutly say this office, and so deserve to be heard before the presence of your divine majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in union with that divine intention, with which you praise God while you are on earth, I offer to you this hour. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. At the Lamb's high feast we sing, praise to our victorious King, who has washed us in the tide, flowing from his wounded side. Praise the Lord, whose love divine Gives his sacred blood for wine Gives his body for the feast Christ the victim, Christ the priest Easter triumph, Easter joy Sin alone can this destroy Souls from sin and death set free, glory in their liberty. Hymns of glory, hymns of praise, Father, unto you we raise. Risen Lord, for joy we sing, let our hymns through heaven ring. Surrender to God, and he will do everything for you. Alleluia. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not envy those who do evil, for they wither quickly like grass and fade like the green of the fields. If you trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in the Lord, he will grant your heart's desire. Commit your life to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act so that your justice breaks forth like the light, your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait in patience. Do not fret at the man who prospers, a man who makes evil plots to bring down the needy and the poor. Calm your anger and forget your rage. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who do evil shall perish, the patient shall inherit the land. A little longer and the wicked shall have gone. Look at his place, he is not there. But the humble shall own the land and enjoy the fullness of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Surrender Surrender to to God, God, and and he will do everything for you. Alleluia. Turn away from from evil, learn learn to do God's will. The Lord will strengthen you if you obey him. Alleluia. The wicked man plots against the just, and gnashes his teeth against him. 
But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is at hand. The sword of the wicked is drawn, his bow is bent to slaughter the upright. Their sword shall pierce their own hearts, and their bows shall be broken to pieces. The just man's few possessions are better than the wicked man's wealth, for the power of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord will support the just. He protects the lives of the upright, their heritage will last forever. They shall not be put to shame in evil days. In time of famine, their food shall not fail. But all the wicked shall perish, and all the enemies of the Lord. They are like the beauty of the meadows. They shall vanish, they shall vanish like smoke. The wicked man borrows without repaying, but the just man is generous and gives. Those blessed by the Lord shall own the land, but those he has crushed, crushed shall be destroyed. The Lord guides the steps of a man and makes safe the path of one he loves. Though he stumble, he shall never fall, for the Lord holds him by the hand. I was young, and now I am old, but I have never seen the just man forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. All the day he is generous and lends, and his children become a blessing. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you shall have a home forever. For the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his friends. The unjust shall be wiped out forever and the children of the wicked destroyed. The just shall inherit the land. There they shall live forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turn Turn away away from from evil. evil, Learn to do God's will. The Lord will strengthen you if you obey him. Alleluia. Wait for the Lord to lead, then follow in his way. Alleluia. The just man's mouth utters wisdom, and his lips speak what is right. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps shall be saved from stumbling. The wicked man watches for the just and seeks occasion to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in his power, nor let him be condemned when he is judged. Then wait for the Lord, keep to his way. It is he who will free you from the wicked, raise you up to possess the land, and see the wicked destroyed. I have seen the wicked triumphant, towering like a cedar of Lebanon. I passed by again, he was gone. I searched, he was nowhere to be found. See the just man, mark the upright. For the peaceful man a future lies in store. But sinners shall all be destroyed. No future lies in store for the wicked. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord, their stronghold in time of distress. The Lord helps them and delivers them and saves them, for their refuge is in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wait for For the the Lord to lead, then follow in his way. Alleluia. Christ, risen from the dead, will never die again. Alleluia. Death no longer has power over him. Alleluia. From the first letter of the Apostle John. Little ones, I address you, for through his name your sins have been forgiven. Fathers, I address you, for you have known him who is from the beginning. Young men, I address you, for you have conquered the evil one. I address you, children, for you have known the Father. I address you, fathers, for you have known him who is from the beginning. I address you, young men, for you are strong, and the word of God remains in you, and you have conquered the evil one. Have no love for the world, nor the things of the world that the world affords. If anyone loves the world, the Father's love has no place in him. For nothing that the world affords comes from the Father. Carnal allurements, enticements for the eyes, the life of empty show, all these are from the world. And the world with its seductions is passing away, but the man who does God's will endures forever. The world and its allurements will pass away. But whoever does God's will shall live forever. Alleluia. Whoever loves the world cannot have the Father's love within him. But whoever does God's will shall live forever. Alleluia. 
from a commentary on the Gospel of John by St. Cyril of Alexandria. All who receive the sacred flesh of Christ are united with him as members of his body. This is the teaching of St. Paul when he speaks of the mystery of our religion that was hidden from former generations, but has now been revealed to the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, namely, that the Gentiles are joint heirs with the Jews, that they are me- that they are members of the same body, and that they have a share in the promise made by God in Christ Jesus. If in Christ all of us, both ourselves and he who is within us by his own flesh, are members of the same body, is it not clear that we are one, both with one another and with Christ? He is the bond that unites us, because he is at once both God and man. With regard to our unity in the Spirit, we may say, following the same line of thought, that all of us who have received one and the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, are united intimately, both with one another and with God. Taken separately, we are many, and Christ sends the Spirit, who is both the Father's Spirit and his own, to dwell in each of us. Yet that Spirit, being one and indivisible, gathers together those who are distinct from each other as individuals, and causes them all to be seen as a unity in himself. Just as Christ's sacred flesh has power to make those in whom it is present into one body, so the one indivisible Spirit of God, dwelling in all, causes all to become one in spirit. Therefore, St. Paul appeals to us to bear with one another charitably, and to spare no effort in securing, by the bonds of peace, the unity that comes from the Spirit. There is but one body and one Spirit, just as there is just as there is but one hope held out to us by God's call. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and works through all and is in all. If the one Spirit dwells in us, The one God and Father of all will be in us, and he, through his Son, will gather together into unity with one another and with himself all who share in the Spirit. There is also another way of showing that we are made one by sharing in the Holy Spirit. If we have given up our worldly way of life and submitted once for all to the laws of the Spirit, it must surely be obvious to everyone that by repudiating, in a sense, our own life and taking on the supernatural likeness of the Holy Spirit who is united to us, our nature is transformed so that we are no longer merely men, but also sons of God, spiritual men, by reason of the share we have received in the divine nature. We are all one, therefore, in the Father and in the Son and and the Holy Spirit. We are one in mind and holiness. We are one through our communion in the sacred flesh of Christ and through our sharing in the one Holy Spirit. Since there is only one loaf, though we are many, we form one body. For all of us partake of the one loaf and the one cup. Alleluia. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the poor, and you give a home to the friendless. For all of us partake of the one bread and the one cup. Alleluia. Let us pray. God, God, our our Father, Father, may may we look forward forward with hope to our resurrection, for you have made us your sons and daughters, and restored the joy of our youth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. And we'll now conclude as we always do with our prayer that follows the divine office. To the most holy and undivided Trinity, to the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ crucified, to the fruitful virginity of the most blessed and glorious Mary ever virgin, and to the whole company of the saints, the everlasting praise, honor, and glory by all creatures, and to us remission of all our sins, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father, and blessed be the breast which nourished Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen.